We're up to video 5 in the Solving Equations video series. Hope you're enjoying it so far. We're going to look at a couple of key examples in which we solve equations with some algebraic fractions. They're pretty tricky but I'll go through step by step and hopefully you'll pick up the uh, correct methods. First example, we've got a couple of fractions here, a over 3 and 3a over 4 equals 2. Looks pretty complex, but I'm uh, going to describe to you one great first move. We're going to look to multiply as our first move, multiply every term by a, what I call a magic number. Now that magic number will be a number that 3 and 4 both divide into. Now one way of finding that magic number is to multiply 3 by 4 and often that's uh, the number that does the trick. So in this case we're going to multiply every term by 12. Gets a bit tricky, we'll just have to be nice and slow and careful and we'll get the hang of it with a bit of practice. We're going to put big brackets around everything and we're going to multiply everything by 12. We're going to write the 12 next to each of the brackets as you can see. It's happening magically before your eyes. And then we're going to do some cancelling. We're going to find numbers that divide into the bottom of each of these fractions and into the top. So you can, I think you can see that 3 could divide into the bottom and into the 12. So let's do that. We'll say to ourselves 3 divides into the bottom and goes once. And 3 divides into the 12 and goes 4 times. Now when we've got that uh, cancelling uh, down finished, we uh, completed, we uh, don't have to worry about any ones that are on the bottom of fractions. And what we do is we multiply that 4 that survives after the 3 divided into the 12, we multiply that 4 across the top here. So we get 4 lots of A and that, uh, that whole bracket turns into a 4A. So in this second bracket here, we're going to look to uh, divide something into the top and the bottom. So I think you can see that 4 can divide into the bottom and it can go into our 12 as well. So 4 goes into the bottom once and into the 12 three times. And once again, we'll look to multiply that 3 that survived after the cancelling across the top. Now we've got 3 times 3a here. 3 times 3a will be 9a. Now this last section, the right hand side of the equation, doesn't have any uh, denominators, doesn't have any fractions, so all we do is uh, com calculate the 12 multiplied by the 2 and the right hand side becomes 24. Now what I like about this method is that uh, in one good first step, even though it can be a bit tricky, uh, we have eliminated all of the bottoms, both of the bottom numbers, and we can get just uh, an equation just on one line like that. So we've got like terms here on the left hand side, they can join up, you're allowed to add and subtract like terms, 4a and 9a, I think you can imagine becomes 13a, so 13a equals 24. Then uh, to move that uh, 13 so that the letter is on its own, to solve the equation here we'll divide both sides by 13. On the left hand side, 13 uh, that's multiplying and 13 that's dividing cancels out. And on the left hand side we're left with just the letter A. And on the right hand side we have 24 divided by 13. Now you might be tempted to divide that in and get some sort of a mixed numeral. But there's nothing stopping us. Just typing it into our calculator and checking it doesn't go down any simpler. But you're allowed to leave those sorts of things as improper fractions if you like. So that's uh, pretty correct there, 24 over 13. The number that's dividing can be the bottom of the uh, final fraction there. So tricky, we've found a magic number to multiply every term by. Now we chose that magic number carefully. We wanted a number where both of the bottom bottoms of the fractions could uh, cancel into that magic number. And then uh, if you compare that top line with the second line, you can tell that the second line is much simpler. So I like that method, even though the cancelling can be uh, can be daunting. Uh, at least uh, you cover a lot of ground and achieve a lot in one big first step there. 
All right, here we've got a fraction on the left-hand side and a fraction on the right-hand side. And in that, in this situation, uh, you're allowed to do something very special. Don't try this in every situation where you've got fractions, but uh, just in this situation where the left-hand side of your equation has a fraction equals the right-hand side, which is also in fraction form. You're allowed to do the following. The 3 on the bottom here is allowed to, mul uh, is allowed to go up to the top of the right-hand side and multiply. And the bottom on the right-hand side, the 8, is allowed to come right around and multiply by the top. Now we have to be really careful with this. The 3 that moves across to the right-hand side has to multiply by the whole top of the right-hand side. And the 8, when it comes around to the left-hand side, has to multiply by the whole top of the left-hand side fraction. So to just to be really careful with the setting out here, we're going to put them in brackets. We're going to make sure that uh, the 8 multiplies by both the A and the 5 on the left-hand side. And uh, on the right-hand side, we're going to make sure that the 3 multiplies by both the A and the minus 1 by writing it out carefully in the brackets like that. So then we uh, have got a bracket type equation here on both sides. Now we need to expand both of those. So 8 times a is 8a. 8 times 5 is 40. It's just a normal expanding of brackets. On the right hand side we have 3 times a is 3a. 3 times minus 1 is minus 3. Now have a look at that third line we have a typical equation with letters on both sides. If you're not sure of uh, how to do that, if you haven't, can't remember how to uh, finish that off, you could look at one of the previous videos. We had a video on solving equations with letters on both sides, but I'll run through it now just to uh, give you some extra practice. So we're looking to move the smaller letter term first. That was my big tip for solving uh, equations with letters on both sides. Very important tip. Makes it much easier. So we look for the smaller letter term here and the smaller letter term between 8a and 3a is, uh, is 3a. We move 3a by doing the opposite. Instead of a plus 3a we want a minus 3a both sides and that'll allow us to join 8a, take away 3a, and get one single letter term. On the right hand side you'll find that the 3a, the plus 3a, and the minus 3a will cancel each other out, leaving us just with the minus 3. Pretty important to make sure you don't uh, ignore that minus sign. It belongs to the 3 at the end there, and so this uh, term down on the next line here must be minus 3. That's where a lot of students might be going a little bit too fast. Then you'll see that we've gone from a, an equation with letters on both sides, which is typical, and now we've got a typical two-step equation, which is outlined in video two if you've, uh, if you've uh, forgotten how to do those. We will minus 40 both sides. They will cancel out on the left-hand side, leaving us with 5a. We have to be pretty careful here. We could do this on our calculator if you're not sure. Minus 3 minus another 40 ends up being minus 43. And to get for our final step here, we just want to get the letter on its own. Obviously we'll have to move that 5 that is multiplying. So we'll divide 5 both sides. On the left hand side, a multiply by 5 and a divide by 5 will cancel, leaving us with a single letter, which is great. And on the right hand side we can just write that as an improper fraction. Minus 43 divided by 5 can be written as minus 43 over 5. Okay, so a special uh, method there when you've got a fraction equaling another fraction. The bottoms can sort of, some people call it cross multiplying. You've got to be really careful with it to make sure you cross multiply properly. Um, but other than that, uh, it's interesting in the harder, harder equations after one first step you get a, a familiar equation, in this case um, one with letters on both sides, and after another good, uh, good step um, we get a two-step equation. So um, after uh, each move you should be getting more and more familiar with how to solve the rest of the question. So don't be daunted by the difficult questions, try and make a good first move and you should hopefully uh, be in your comfort zone from there on. They're not easy, these last couple of, uh, these, these two um, 
equation, fraction equation questions, but um, they're good for a challenge, that's for sure. All right, hope that helps, and uh, we'll catch you next time.